And I want to go ahead and, and transition our service here to the time of tithes and offerings. And we've been in our series called The Helper, where we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. And you're going to get a great message in just a moment. But one of the things that I wanted to make sure we drew attention to this morning is the fact that today is Pentecost Sunday. Now, you may not know. You're like, what is Pentecost Sunday? Well, Pentecost Sunday is actually, you're going to hear a little bit more, but it's 50 days after Passover. And a lot of amazing things happened. And one thing that specifically happened that was truly amazing right here in Los Angeles, less than 20 miles from where we sit right now, was something called the Azusa Street Revival. Raise your hand if you heard of the Azusa Street Revival. Now, this was a revival that happened in the early 1900s, 1906. I know it sounds like a long time ago, but it wasn't that long ago. And for my kids, no, I wasn't alive at this time. But the reality is that this is something that happened that transformed the church and the world, where in Los Angeles, all types of people came together underneath of new, not a new teaching, but a revived teaching that had been lost, which was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And people began to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And black, white, Latino in the early 1900s were coming together to worship God, unlike anything else that had ever been seen before in this country then or even still today is still a challenge in many places. But I want to give you one woman in particular, the mother of Pentecostalism. Many consider this woman the founder or the mother of this actual movement being birthed. And we know a lot about a man named William Seymour, who was the pastor over this revival. But before William Seymour was a woman by the name of Lucy Farrell. And you can go ahead and put that up on the screen. This, you see Miss Lucy Farrell, beautiful woman back there behind William Seymour in the front. And Lucy Farrell was actually born in 1851 in Norfolk, Virginia, as a slave. And isn't it just like God to take the unlikeliest of people to begin an amazing movement? Not only was she a slave, but she was a woman. And yet God used somebody like that. Come on, I want you to get excited because that means that God can use the unlikeliest of unlikely to make something happen that transforms this world, which includes you and myself today. And so this woman, born there in 1851, we don't know much about her history because guess what? They didn't keep a lot of records on slaves back then. But by the time of around 1890, she moved to Houston, Texas, and was pastoring a little church there. And she had a man named William Seymour walk into her doors, and they, they formed a friendship. She ended up handing over the church to him while she went to a Bible college in Kansas. And while she was there in Kansas, she heard a man by the name of Charles Fox Parham speaking on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And while she was listening, she received that message and the Holy Spirit came upon her, and she began to speak in tongues. Now, she was the first recorded African American to ever receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You see, prior to this, they weren't even sure if, if they should share the gospel message with slaves. And so this was a little bit after Emancipation Proclamation. So they started to share the message. People started to get saved. But now this is the first recorded woman to ever receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the African American community. And so from there, she went back to Houston, Texas, to that little church, and she began to talk to William Seymour and said, you got to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And she started to talk to her congregation. And shortly thereafter, they moved to Los Angeles, and Azusa Street Revival began to break out. And she was known as the anointed hand woman. I'm sorry, the anointed maidservant. And she basically would continue this move by... Every time she was putting her hands on people, they began to receive the Holy Spirit baptism. She would go around, and she didn't just stay here in Los Angeles. She went all over the place in the rest of the country. She even found her way all the way across the Atlantic Ocean in Liberia. And she at one point was preaching to the crew people. And while she was there, she was actually preaching in their native language, even though she never learned it. The Holy Spirit empowered her to be able to proclaim this truth and this message. And when I think about Lucy Farrell, it reminds me of the power of firsts. You see, her being the first recorded African-American to receive this teaching shows how important to God the first really is. You see, we, a lot of the, the, the notice came from those who came after her, but because she was the first and she was faithful with what God had given her, 
God was able to use that first to not only bring breakthrough in her life, but also transform the world. And the same is true for our lives as well. When I think about our finances, we're talking about tithing. When we give God our first and very best, he's able to use it to bring transformation in ways that we would never imagine. You could have looked at Lucy Farrow and her church there in Houston, Texas, and be like, this was insignificant. And sometimes I believe we feel like the first that we give to God, maybe we feel like this is insignificant. I'm not seeing the breakthrough. But guess what? Hold on, because shortly after that moment, God used that woman to bring revival all across this nation. And I believe you can do the same with us when we continue to entrust to him the very first of what we receive from him, whether it's a teaching, our finances, or anything else. And so I want to encourage us today as we get ready to give in this moment to remember the power of the first. If God could use something, an unlikely woman like Lucy Farrell, to bring something to this world that would transform all of our lives, how much more could he do through us? Let's get ready to give in that that attitude of heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for women like Lucy Farrell. We thank you for the power of firsts. Lord, when we entrust to you the very first of what you've given us, we thank you that there's power that comes through that. Whether we see it right now or not, we know you have a plan. We know that you're on the move, and we know that breakthrough and revival is on the way, God. We thank you. You desire that no man or woman should perish. Lord, use all that we give you today as an offering that you deserve, God. Let it be used to bring glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. And everybody say amen. We hope you enjoyed that video. We're always posting new content, so go ahead and click the subscribe button now to subscribe to Every Nation City Church channel. God bless you.